Hello, everyone. It's uh, Thursday, July 25th. Uh, I appreciate you being with us. Uh, I'm going to start with something that's surely dear to my heart and really terribly sad. But uh, yesterday we learned about, uh, you know, or just a, a day or so ago, we learned the, the passing of one of our heroes that I see lots and lots of times, and that is one of our coal miners. We lost Ashley Kogar, and uh, she had restrained, restrained in, uh, or, or had injuries, sustained injuries last week, and then we ended up losing her a, uh, yesterday, I think. And uh, she is the second fatality of 2024. She was working at Waco Surface Mine, and uh, you know, to be perfectly honest, usually we're reading about losing a, uh, you know, one of our coal miners from the standpoint of a deep mine. Uh, from the standpoint of a surface mine, it's, it's not that often, but, uh, but it's just terrible. And it's really, really, really terrible. And, and these, uh, these heroes help power this country. They help if they're producing metallurgical coal, it's going into making coke that makes steel that absolutely builds this country and builds the world. And so uh, I just hate it. I really, really hate it for the family. And Kathy and I ask for your prayers. And it is, uh, it's tough when we lose a coal miner because, you know, uh, they get up, they get their dinner buckets, they go to work every day. They're the best of the best. They're craftsmen beyond belief and they're really unbelievable at their trade i mean if you could see how they run equipment and how they how they perform their their job it is amazing and so ashley will be missed and uh and we want you to absolutely always remember our coal miners they do so much for this great state and this great nation over and ever every day every single day uh, we lost an athletic director at Marshall University, you know, one of the guys in the past and everything, Bob Markham. I, I know Bob and, and he did a great job and we, we really do appreciate all the great work that he did for years and years and, uh, and, and he'll be missed. He, he was uh, instrumental in, in Marshall, you know, moving in, into Conference USA and uh, that was a big milestone for, for Marshall University, and so he'll really be missed. So remember Bob as well in your prayers. Now I'm going to go to stuff that's kind of uh, much lighter, that's for sure. But uh, today I'm announcing that the brand new Twin Falls Resort State Park splash pad is now open. And... Uh, the project was $4 million in the upgrades, and Twin Falls, you know, uh, is not very far out of the town of Beckley, not very far from Pineville. You know, it's uh, absolutely beautiful, beautiful state park. And so, so I, we have Brett McMill McMillian on, and he's going to talk to us and tell us a whole lot more about how the water is at Twin Falls right now. So, uh, Brett, if you could come on, please. Well, thank you, Governor, and welcome to the Lily Pad, Lily Pad Splash Park at Twin Falls Resort State Park. And I tell you, when you look behind us, you can see these kids are having an absolute big-eyed time, Governor. We've got the, the squirting frog, the water table, the water cannons, the sprinkler, and, of course, the dumping bucket behind us. And, Governor, as I watch these kids, I realize that this investment that you made meets the mission of the park system perfectly by providing this activity for generations and generations to come. I think you can see by watching these kids behind me the fun that they're having. Governor, your investment in this pond project not only built this particular splash pad, it added a brand new golf pro shop at Twin Falls. Multiple other projects came out of that four million. We've still got more planned. There's a climbing wall to be added. The nature center is going to be revamped and moved up to the lodge area. The Falls Trail is going to see a boardwalk and some aesthetic upgrades to that trail also. But today we get a look at these kids back here just enjoying the benefits of these dollars and these investments and that belief that you have in tourism. So, Governor, I would like to, to share a message that the kids wanted to, to give you before we go. If we can get them to come on up, they've got a little something that they wanted to share with you. Thank you. 
<laughs> Governor, I don't know if you can hear him. There's a lot of noise in the background. Thank you. That's exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, Governor, they're having a great time. We wish you were here with us. You'd absolutely have a ball. I know if you had those grandkids of yours here, they'd be right there in the middle of it. So, so thank you, Governor. We appreciate your support. Before you go, Brett, tell those kids to all come over here. I, I, I got something I want to say to them. Let's try again. Everybody come back. They're, they're coming. They're not technically allowed to run. They're doing the fast walk. So come on. The governor's got something he wants to say to you. Okay. Can y'all hear me? Y'all hear me? All right. Now listen. I'm the governor, and I'm putting all of y'all in charge. But all of y'all have got to take Brett McMillian out there underneath one of those splash things and get him uh -oh. and get him soaked for me. Okay? Now all of y'all are in charge right now. You take him out there and get him soaked, okay? You got it. We're we'll do it. Let's do it. Uh oh, here they go. I'm going to get him wet. Oh, I got him. All right, guys. <laughs> I saw that one. I saw that one boy blast him. That's good. All right, listen, y'all have a big time. Thank you, Governor Justice, for oh. this splash pad. Okay, all good. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, y'all be good. Okay, Monday we celebrated an unbelievable thing in, in Weirton. Uh, you know, we had to... You know, our a cannonball right to the stomach that I would refer to, you know, five months ago, roughly. And uh, when we all of a sudden we, we awakened to a ruling on tariffs on an international basis and everything, they were, you know, the great people up there, there was 900 jobs. They were producing rolled tin that would go in for pop cans or whatever it, it may be. And all of a sudden, boom, you know, an adverse decision in regard to tariffs, and that plant was out of business, period. Nowhere to turn, nowhere to turn. You know, in all honesty, I thought if it ever opens again, it'll take years and years. And so with all that being said, we just went to work. I mean, that's all there is to it. All of us, all of us went to work. Just what we do. Strap up our boots and absolutely pull the rope together and all of us go to work. So lo and behold, you know, we turn this knob and this knob and Cliffs turns this knob and this knob and others are all pushing in their way too. And lo and behold, an idea comes. The idea is retool the whole factory. Well, so often in this country now, we don't retool anything. What we do is we just take the jobs and move them to China or whatever, and move them to Vietnam, you know, move them to Mexico, you know. But this is a different story. This story is just this. We had to step up from the state, you know, from economic development. Absolutely, they had to step up. And lo and behold, you have the retooling of a factory right there in Weirton, West Virginia, that's going to have 600 jobs with the hope, the hope that we'll have more and more and more. It's an unbelievable story. It's a great story. So on Monday, myself, and, and I'm going to probably fail in this, but uh, Lorenzo Goncalves, and he's, the, he's just sitting over there to the left or to the right of me, but, uh, you know, they made an incredible announcement. We were there in Weirton. We first cleared it through the EDA, and, and then on to Weirton we went, and uh, you see a lot, a lot, a lot of happy folks right there. So, unbelievable day, and, uh, and, and you know, but to have 600 manufacturing jobs you know, that we didn't lose there in Weirton, that we'll have those folks back and try to build on it to even have more good stuff. Really, really good stuff. Okay, I want to announce, you know, that uh, our DOT is surely hard at work, and uh, with the new $150 million supplemental budget that we, we just uh, 
uh, that I just signed in May. You see what they're doing? They're, they're working night and day all across this state and, you know, repairing our roads and just making things better and better for all of us. And so, so uh, if you look at that equipment, that equipment is relatively new and, and they're able to do so much so fast. I mean, these people are superstars if you just give them something to work with. You know, they can't go out there with a slingshot and be able to absolutely accomplish what they're doing right here, but, but what they're doing is the real deal, and we're really proud of them, and you see it everywhere. You see it all across this great state. you got to be as proud of them as I am, and, uh, and, you know, I can tell you, and I don't say this braggadociously because I want to pass on accolades to everybody, but when I walked in this door, you couldn't get to the convenience store without tearing your vehicle all to pieces. And today it's a different animal, and we're just going to try to keep making it better and better. Tuesday, I was back in Wheeling, and, uh, and I celebrated there with a, a group of folks that was really neat, really, really neat. These are the Women of Asphalt. Their organization was just created, you know, uh, this is the second year. It is a national organization, but these great women are involved in the construction industry across this in unbelievable state. They were so good in so many different ways to all of us and everything, and uh, we really, really, really enjoyed the, the day. I got to speak with them, and then... And then we sat there and talked to many, many, many folks and everything and whole, heard of all the great things that they're doing. This building, I think, was uh, reno uh, newly renovated and everything. Beautiful, beautiful building. Beautiful place to have this event and everything. And uh, lots of really great stuff going on in Wheeling. You know, as you know, right now, the this new streetscape situation is going on right there. That was a really tough one. That was a really, really, really tough one to figure out how to do it because of all the lines running underneath the streets and everything, and everything had to, had to be engineered to the hilt, and it was, uh, it was a tough one to figure it out, but we got it finally, and absolutely that city and those folks have been wonderful to me from day one and everything, and, and, and it is an absolute booming area with so much potential and opportunity, it's off the chart. We want to keep on, keep on doing good right there. And so, uh, great day, great day in Wheeling. Okay, from August the 2nd through the 5th, we're going to have our sales tax holiday. You know, so you can pick up lots of different stuff, clothing items or, you know, computer stuff, you know, all supplies for school, going back to school, take advantage. You'll save a few bucks and everything, but uh, that's from August the 2nd through August the 5th. We're one of, I think, uh, there's less than 20 states in this country that does this and everything, but maybe it helps out a little bit, and that's good stuff. Maybe you can buy a few more supplies, and our kids need them. Um, we just... We just added another almost heaven swing, and, uh, and that is uh, at, at, at Snowshoe Mountain in, in, in Pocahontas County. And, uh, you know, so now I think that puts us up to 26 of these. You know, the kids over in Nicholas County and the work that they've done is off the chart. I mean, that's all there's to it. It is, it is terrific, and uh, now it's become a... Uh, you know, tourism destination where people want to go and they get their pictures on if they can go get to all the swings and everything. It's really special. And, and so we just love it. And uh, we congratulate those talented, talented students and everything for all the great work that they do. And they make us look good. That's all there is to it. Uh, I guess I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get straight on the days, but I think it was... I think it was last night or night before last and everything. Uh, I had the opportunity, I think night, night before last, but uh, I had the opportunity to, to go over to the Greenbrier and ride around on my golf cart and everything and go to different receptions from different states. 
you know, the, they, there was uh, senatorial folks and, and folks from the legislature there, you know, from West Virginia. West Virginia had their thing going on. I went by there and I went to, uh, I got down to Tennessee. I'd seen some Alabama folks before that. And then I went up to uh, Case Mountain and everything and saw the Kentucky folks and everything. And, uh, and we just, all, all I wanted to do was to make them welcome to this great state and, and tell them, you know, how much we appreciate them and how proud we are of them. And, uh, and I know they were doing some different things, uh, you know, across the state and everything. But uh, really, really, it was, it, it was re really enjoyable to be with them. And uh, the last thing is I want to remind everybody again about your application at Twin Falls in regard to this once in a lifetime archery hunt and everything. It, uh, you know, and somebody will be drawn to be on national TV with Whitetail Frenzy. So take advantage. I've told you about that before and that's all I've got. We'll take your questions. All right, thank you, Governor. We'll now take questions from members of the media. First question today, Mark Curtis with Nexstar Media. Governor, good afternoon. Good afternoon, fellow reporters and staffers. Uh, Governor, I'd like to get some clarity on the situation involving Mark Scott, the soon-to-be-departed Secretary of Agricul uh, Administration. Um, is he leaving because there was a concern about a political action committee he was running while also being a state employee? And is that potentially an ethics violation? And or was some of this related to him being one of the people who voted to put baby dog in the mural? If you could kind of give us the details to the extent that you can. Thank you. <laughs> oh, gosh, Mark. Oh, my goodness gracious. I cannot believe. I cannot believe Mark Scott asked me if Mark Scott was the, one of those that voted to put baby dog in the, in the mural. I mean, do we not have something better to do in life? I mean, really and truly, I'll take a magic marker and go up there and mark her out if, that, you know, if that's what you want. But really and truly, all of us have, have enough sense to know that's not baby dog, you know, but we, we just put an English bulldog in the, in the mural and everything. Surely, people were doing it surely just to think, it was a nice thing to do. There'll probably be, there'll probably be over the years, there'll probably be tens and tens of thousands of people that will walk up there and see that that wouldn't even take time to do it and everything because they think that that's one of Baby Dog's descendants. I mean, do we not have something better to do? But, but really your question primarily, Mark, was, was about, you know, about Mark Scott and was he doing something that was ethically not correct and wrong. I can, all I can do is tell you just this. My chief of staff came to me, and, and, and you know, that's Brian Abraham. And Brian said to me, you know, we, we may have an issue here, and what, how do you, what, what do you want us to do, and how do you want us to handle this? Because there is a possibility here that, uh, that Mark Scott, you know, you know, was, was doing stuff on, on government time that, uh, that was basically the solicita solicitation of some campaign funds and campaign dollars. I said, get to the bottom of it. We don't do stuff like that. No, we don't. You know, and so, so I, said, I said, get to the bottom of it and get to the bottom of it right now. And so Brian basically went up and said, Mark, you know, is this true? Because basically what happened was, you know, two or three people came to Brian and said, this is what Mark had done. So we get to the bottom of it. We went up, you know, presented it to Mark. Here's what Mark said. You know, Mark said he thought he was doing it exactly the way it should be done and exactly by the book. But, and Mark, I think a lot of, I think he thinks a lot of Brian. I know he thinks a lot of me. And what did Mark do? He said, look, I'm not going to cause the governor embarrassment or a problem. And really and truly, if I've messed up and I've crossed the line and I should not have done this and whatever, then I'm going to resign. And so he resigned. You know, that's the end of the story. 
you know, that's what was reported back to me. That's why I said that I believe that he got out probably over his skis and maybe messed up and everything. But with all that being said, I wish him the very best. And uh, I think Mark Scott's a good man, and I wish him the best. And we've replaced him with, uh, you know, his interim, and that is, uh, you know, uh, uh, John McHugh. And, uh, and so we'll move forward. You know, that's what we do. All right, thank you, Mark. Next up, Stephen Adams with Ogden News. Yeah, Steve Adams of all the newspapers here. A uh, couple quick follow-up questions. When was that meeting with Mark Scott? Did that occur last Monday? Also, uh, I know I have sought the letter of resignation from the Department of Administration. Brad McElhenney with Metro News, who uh, is uh, not on this briefing for whatever reason, also requested it through your all's office. Will you all release the letter of resignation from Mark Scott so that we have it? Uh, and just also, it is the end of this month when that official resignation takes effect. Correct. Uh, Stephen, I didn't get the very last part of your question. You said, would you release the, the, the letter of resignation and then you, and then there was something else. Now you're on mute now. Yeah, just double confirming that his resignation takes place uh, at the end of this month. Okay, Stephen, I think I've got it, but uh, to the best of what's been told to me, the meeting was last week, you know, and he immediately said he was going to resign, and, and yes, his, the last day will be July 31st, and, uh, and absolutely, without any question, we'll release the letter. All right, thank you, Mark. Next up is Beth Sargent with the Gazette Mail. Hello, Governor. Thank you for taking my question. Um, my question is about the Capitol Mural Project, but I was wondering if you can comment on any updates you've been giving on the remaining mur murals that are going to be installed. Do you have an updated timeline? Do you know if there'll be an opportunity for the public to view and comment on the renderings before they're installed? Any sort of comment you'd like to give there? Thank you. Uh, all I really know is that they'll be uh, installed before the end of the year. Uh, you know, I, I like it. I'm I I'm not involved in this at all. And, uh, and, but at the same time, I am involved on one aspect, and it's just this. How long, how long have we been waiting to have these murals put up? How long? I mean, years and years and years and years. And really and truly, you know, we're doing it. And, and, and honestly, uh, I would be thinking that, that what we ought to do is we ought to be celebrating something that we, we weren't able to do for a long, 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 long time. But, uh, but I found the money to do it, and I told them, absolutely, let's do it. Beautification of this incred incredible capital is off the chart. And so uh, we want to do that, and, uh, and, and really and truly, from the aspect of of baby dogs, long lost ancestors and everything in the thing and just sitting in the background in her little way there and everything. Uh, you know, I, I, I thought it was cute and, uh, and, and to be perfectly honest, baby dog has drawn a lot, a lot of attention to this state. And, uh, and I think it's, it's, I think it's great, but at the same time, you know, if we want to go up there and tear them down, we'll tear them down if that's, if that's what people want to do. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's silly. That's all there is to it. All right. Thank you, Beth. Next up is John Mark Shaver with West Virginia News. Good afternoon, Governor. Uh, checking in again, I asked this question last week, but are we any, uh, do we have a firmer date for the special session 
to talk about the personal income tax cuts later this year. Thank you. No, I appreciate the question and everything because it's a great question and it's, a, it's the question that absolutely uh, impacts all of us across this great state, the voters in every way. And we're working with the legislature right now. And uh, we've, been, we've, we've been working. We don't have a firm date yet, but, uh, but we'll get that and get that real soon and everything. And, you know, a lot of people run in a lot of different directions right now on vacations and everything else under the sun. So uh, we just don't have it firmed up, but, uh, but we'll get that and get that real soon and you're, you're splitting the bullseye. There, and, and look, that's why, that's why I get frustrated about, uh, you know, about our focus at times on things that don't mean anything, you know, you know, I, I'm a big picture guy. You know, I, I want to focus on things that mean something, you know, and, and really and truly there is nothing, zero, nothing that will drive economic development to this state like absolutely the redu reduction and the elimination of our state income tax will do for West Virginia. Now, I've got us on the pathway but we gotta have enough guts to absolutely do everything we can possibly do to keep the pathway going and keep the pathway really moving. Or what's gonna happen is we're gonna awaken to half the states in the country, you know, don't have a state income tax and then we're gonna be sitting there twiddling our thumbs wondering, well, what about us? You know, West Virginia is leading the way in so many things right now, it's off the chart. Now, absolutely. Let's absolutely wake up. Wake up to the fact that we, we know what it's like being dead last. We hit that down pat for decades and decades and decades. Now, we almost don't know what it's like to be ahead. Maybe we don't even want to be ahead, but our voters and our people deserve it. They absolutely deserve it in every way. Do you remember at, at, at the national convention when I said, you know, the question was really simple. I said it two times. I said it, you know, why does Donald Trump keep taking all the abuse day after day after day? Why does Donald Trump absolutely take the senseless persecution? I said, and then I paused and I said, because we're worth it. You see, that's my line. That's what I've said over and over and over. At the end of the day, I said it twice there. But at the end of the day, absolutely, why in the world do we try with all in us to lower the state income tax? Because we're worth it. This state is worth it. And the great people of West Virginia absolutely are worth it. That's what we should be doing. Your question is the very best question because it centers around what is the most important. In my opinion, in Jim Justice's opinion, it'll never change. West Virginia is the greatest state. I started off that speech, you know, by saying that we were the great state of West Virginia with the greatest people on the planet. And then right behind that, what did I say? Come and give us a look and come and see for yourself. You know, I'm telling you, your question splits the bullseye. You'll have a date real soon, but then we've got to get our legislature to go along. We've got to have them to go along. We have vetted this within you know, the Department of Revenue through and through, and absolutely it's as safe as safe can possibly be. We need to move forward. All right, thank you, John Mark. Next up is Amelia Nicely with West Virginia Watch. Hi, Governor. Hi, everyone. Um, Governor, I was wondering, can you share an update since the May special session on whether the Department of Human Services has restored funding to the IDD waiver program 
and if they've increased those reimbursement rates for workers who help this population since this was something that you had called on for that special session. I, I think I, I think this that uh, you're going, you know, you you, you just got to stay tuned just a little bit longer and everything. But uh, but I think you're going to see some new news come out in regard to IDD and uh, and and funding for folks that uh, that are very very deserving and funding in a better way and I think you're going to be really happy about that but uh, don't forget this how long did we have that wait list how long did we have the list for the IDD waivers and all that kind of stuff how long did it just sit there and sit there we got rid of it didn't we you know so so uh, there's no one in that camp any more than me so we we just want to we want to continue to run the store as best we possibly can and uh, you know there's need everywhere every single place and everything and so we we want to be sure that we uh, we don't get ourselves out over our skis and uh, and so so at the same time I think you're going to see some really good uh, uh, stuff happen there all right yeah thank you Amelia next up is Curtis Johnson with WSAZ Hey, Governor, great to be with you this afternoon. Thanks so much for taking my question. Just a bit of clarification with regards to Mark Scott's resignation. Number one, did your office or you ask for his resignation? And then number two, given its relationship to this uh, political action committee, the he was announced as the leader of that committee back in February. The election was in May. Why did it take so long for this to come forward? Curtis, I, I can't answer why it took so long. Uh, you know, I, I, when I was brought, brought, when it was brought to my attention and everything, I think, I think people want to take time to do the proper investigating and all that and all that. And so, you know, uh, when I, when I was uh, brought up to speed in regard to, you know, what was going on or what was possibly going on, you know, uh, that was made, you know, to, uh, information came to me from Brian Abraham and, uh, and then, and then, you know, there was some more, I guess, vetting. And then, and then the question came back to me is, you know, how do you want us to proceed? I said, go and absolutely get to the bottom of it. You know, as far as us asking for Mark Scott's, uh, resignation, I do not now I wasn't in the meeting. But I do not think that that uh, that, that was uh, came up that way. I think basically, you know, what happened was exactly what I just said. You know, uh, we brought up the concern, and 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 why was the concern brought up? Because three or four different people, or two or three different people, had come to Brian Abraham and told him what their story of things that were going on and their concern. You know, he came to me. You know, after putting together information and everything, he came to me. Then I instructed him on what to do. He went to Mark Scott. And then when he went to Mark Scott, what did Mark do? Mark said, look, and, his and I can't be more truthful. You know, I think Mark Scott's a good man. And what he did is he said, look, if I've, if I've done something that could cause the governor, you know, embarrassment, you know, if I've done something to where you know, I thought I was doing it exactly how it should be done. I mean, you know, for crying out loud, guys. I mean, you know, you have people that make mistakes maybe. And, uh, and so at that point in time, before we could go any further whatsoever, he said, I'm going to resign. And so he said, I've got plenty of things that I need to do and can do and everything. I'm going to resign. And so that's what happened. All right. Thank you, Curtis. Governor, back to you. No, I thank everybody, and uh, and and you know it. Uh, uh, you know, I, I I welcome your questions and everything. You know, I I I entrust, and I mean this, and and all of you know this. All of you know this. The one thing that I absolutely will go to my grave with is I want to be fair. I want to be fair, and you know if uh, if it if it gets to the point in time when things are totally absurd and totally ridiculous fake news stuff 
and everything, and it just goes on and on, won't stop, won't stop, and everything, then we've got to go a different direction, you know. But I'll be as fair as a human being could be, you know. There's been times when all of you have asked me questions and that have been tough questions to answer. I'm good. I'm good. But, uh, you know, when, when there's a real live bias and it just goes on and on and on, then we've got to go another way, you know. And, but uh, listen, I think the world of you. I have told you that many, many, many times, and that's where I'm going to stand. So, uh, you know, you don't hear me just beating the drums and screaming, this is fake news, this blah, 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 blah. You know, I, I don't do that. But, but at the same time, you know, when you, you know, when you, when you have incident after incident after incident after incident, and, and, and you know, and in, in most all situations in the era, then you got to move on, you know, so we move on. Anyway, nevertheless, I thank you, and I appreciate your questions with all in me. God bless each and every one of you, and let's just keep West Virginia moving in a great way. Let's get rid of our personal income tax someday. Let's absolutely get rid of our personal income tax someday. Let's quit me beating on, on whomever it may be, you know, and absolutely let's keep moving this state forward. There, it may, there may not be the biggest news every single day, you know, but I'll promise you this, for 600 folks, that are, or families that are in, in the Wheeling or the Weirton area, that's a big deal. You know, absolutely, without, with all in me, you know, from the standpoint of those wonderful women, the ladies of asphalt, you know, and, and what, what they're doing, you know, all across the state, it's a big deal. You know, y'all know what the big deals are. You know, this situation with Mark Scott, you know, if, if what Mark was doing was not, not right or ethic, ethically wrong, I'd deal with it. You know, that's what I do. And, uh, and so, so but, uh, but the biggest deal that we can, we can somewhat get across the finish line in this state is giving the people's money back to the people. Because in the, at the end of the day, it's their money. So nevertheless, I thank you a bunch. Thank you all.